This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. Later in the show, I speak with a former journalist about the reasons he believes that faith is the only way a person can go to heaven. But first, fear can be a powerful emotion for many of us that keeps us from danger. But for others, it can be paralyzing. My first guest has devoted his life to bringing peace to others as a pastor. However, one day, in the blink of an eye, fear took over Pastor Nathan Branham's life. That surprised me after meeting you and the joy that's in your yeah. face that you, you had a time in your life when you just felt like all the darkness is closing in and you're in a pit. What, what happened? Yeah, I did, Bob. It was, um, I still remember the day. It was so, so powerful and so terrifying that you know, it was indelibly imprinted upon my heart. Uh, October 1st, 2004. Um, I was at, I'd been in ministry for about four years. I was born again in 1994, so serving so the Lord for years. So you'd been serving the Lord for 10 years. I mean, you knew, yeah. you knew who you were as a child of Absolutely. God. Absolutely. Fear is irrational, right? It, it, mm -hmm. it, it causes you to think things that, that aren't true. Right. And, and so I was at work one day at the mission. I was so in you, my were, office. you were in missions work at that time. You weren't in, in, I was, involved yeah. in a church. Yeah, I was in missions work. Mm -hmm. And I was in my office, and this, I just thought I was going to die. I mean, it hit your brain or your heart, or how did you feel? Yeah, I, I just felt like I was going to die. Jumped out of my seat. I ran next door to my coworker and I said, "Please pray for me. I think I'm going to die." It was terrifying. And then, to add insult to injury, I felt like the earth would open up and swallow me into hell. It was it was terrifying. And uh, so, not only that you thought you were going to die, but you thought you'd lost your salvation. I did. Yeah, it, it was it was uh, beyond terrifying. And uh, he began to pray for me. The prayer was ineffective. I fell to my knees and just began to cry out to God. And uh, the the feeling subsided. But that was the earthquake, and I would experience over the next four or five years shockwave after shockwave of fear and terror along those same lines. As, and as deep as it was that day, or as, were, as you pretty like much, it was yeah, it was as deep uh, and as, as as tough as I experienced that day, and uh, it caused me to dig into God's word like I had never done before. So that was your battle plan. I'm going to get into God's word. I mean, it wasn't a matter of. I'm going to go see a psychiatrist or a, a medical doctor, but I mean, did, did you see any doctors? Or you just said, "This is my battle plan. I'm going to get into the Word of God here and find out why I'm th this. This thing is taking over." Yeah, I I had thought many times maybe I need to go see a doctor for this. Mm -hmm. Maybe I maybe I need to get on medication, um, but I didn't. And I'm not saying that anyone that deals with this shouldn't do that. I'm mm -hmm. just saying that's not what I did. I believe that if, if we're reading the truth, if that's what it is in the mm -hmm. Bible, that it should be able to diagnose me and then provide a cure or a solution to that problem. And so that's what I did. I dug in and I believe I found the solution. And where did, I mean, was it in one particular scripture that you just grabbed a hold of or was it just throughout the Word of God? Throughout the Word of God, I looked, believe it or not, I went to Job. Who suffered, <laughs> well, yeah, there you who go. doesn't go to Job there, in their yeah. difficult times, right? I went to Job. And I found and for out, those who don't know, I mean, yeah, people that are true. watching, that's true. Job, uh, he, God sort of just gave him over to be tormented in a way. I mean, he, his friends were tormenting him. His wife was saying, why don't you just give up and die, curse God and die? So Job, was, he's, he's the guy you go to when you say he survived and God blessed him afterwards. That's right. Job went through horrendous suffering, mm -hmm. right? Lost his children. Right. Part of that was he felt like he was forsaken by God. And that was probably the, the, the real right. trial in the But he trial. held on to God anyway. I mean, he thought he was forsaken, but he, he, he did not curse God. No, no he didn't. He was faithful. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, God, I'm going through this. I'm going to hold on to my faith, and I'm not mm -hmm. going to let you go. Uh, Job said in John 13, 15, he said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him, and I'll maintain my ways before him. So think about that. Job was saying, even though God, in, in, at that point, he was perceiving it was God, and most of it was Satan. But mm -hmm. anyway, he perceived that it was God that, that was tormenting him. And so it wasn't God that was tormenting him. It was, it was, it was Satan at the time. It was Satan, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And uh, God knew the work that he had done in Job's life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, through that time of suffering, I really had a lot of questions like, God, why are you letting me go through this? Uh, if I'm saved, why am I experiencing this? Those were the real big questions for me that I had to answer. Now you said these, these things would come in waves, and it would be these aftershocks yes. of this fear. 
during the time in between and the intermittent time, was there a depression? Was there any feeling that it was going to come back? Was there a, even a fear that it would reoccur? So fear on top of fear. Um, you know what, there was, but there was also relief. Like, my Lord, I'm just thankful to be free mm -hmm. from that overwhelming fear. How did it finally just go away? It's gone now. It's gone now, yeah. How, how did you finally wake up one morning and say, wow, God's brought me through it? Yeah, I, I believe that I really grew through that. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I, my faith got to the point in the Word of God that took me out of the reach of that overwhelming fear. And there's fears. I mean, people suffer from fears of, I mean, and some are very, very real, fear of spiders. Mm -hmm. My wife hates spiders. Yeah, she sure. can play with mice, but she hates spiders. But there's fear of snakes and all kinds of fears like that. But this is a different thing. This is really an, an attack yes. of, of the enemy. Yeah, that's right. You know, fear is incapacitating. Mm -hmm. uh, First John says that fear has torment, right? Fear is tormenting. And those right. that fear are not made perfect in love. So in the process of the believer growing in faith, um, we're going to have to confront fear, and then we're going to have to overcome it. Yeah, if someone's suffering from that now, and I'm, I'm talking about deep anxiety attacks, see, they're, su they're, they're, they're afraid that they've lost their salvation, they've done something they can't be forgiven for, or they're real anxiety attacks, and there's something maybe chemically going on in their brain, or there's something psychologically going on. What can, you, what can you speak to them right now? I'd give them three things. First is their faith. That they need to dig into God's okay. word. Is, is if, my, if they're, yeah. Even if they're, if they're a non-Christian. Yeah. Wh where do they start? Yeah, I, I think that they need to realize that there is something greater and higher than them. Mm -hmm. We know that to be God, right? right? And that they have a purpose. I would encourage them. This is, this is like Hello. God knocking at the door yeah. of their heart. Like, listen, mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm here and I want to help you. So faith would be my first right. piece of advice. The second would be family. Reaching out mm -hmm. to those around you, getting different opinions, getting thoughts, getting help, getting encouragement, and, and see that you can, you're not in this right. alone. A and lot if, of times we feel like we are, but we're not. And if the fear is coming from the family, I mean, it may be causing the fear in some people's lives is their, uh, their relationships, to find someone else who's going who's gonna to invest in their life and listen to them. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think mentorship would help. Um, mm -hmm. uh, talking to a local pastor, being talking to someone that's gone through this. Yeah, being accountable. What's, what's one, one promise that God made you, that you found in his word, that he made you during that time? 2 Corinthians 1.5 mm -hmm. says that we experience the suffering of Christ, but it's for others. Out of this entire mm -hmm. journey of fear, I realized that what I was experiencing was the suffering of Christ. Right. Think about all that Jesus encountered and all that he mm -hmm. suffered. Probably the greatest piece of his suffering was when he was on the cross and he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And, and as believers, mm -hmm we will more than likely, at one time or another, have to feel that. But here's, here's what happens. When we use our faith to reach through the fear and take a hold of God, that means that we, we get in connection with hope, love, joy, peace, all of those things. We find that it couldn't have been without that suffering. Right. What, would you give that up now? Would you take that out of your resume? You know what, if you were to ask me that right when I was in the midst of it, I'd say, just get me out of this. I never yeah. want to experience that again. But looking back on it, I wouldn't change a thing. It's made you who you are today. It is. Yeah. Speak to that person right now that, that they're, they're saying, yeah, I, I, I can relate to what he's, what he's been through. Would you pray for them? Absolutely. Would you do that? Yeah. Thank you. So, Father, we come before you now in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I'm thinking of that one right now who is so desperate, who is hurting. Their hearts are broken. All they see is darkness all about them. God, I'm asking in Jesus' name right now that you would break the powers of darkness, that you would deliver them of this overwhelming, controlling fear. You promised that you haven't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. God, fear has torment, but you are the God of love. And so, God, I'm asking right now that you would deliver this one. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'd like more information about Jesus Christ or how to connect to a local church, go to our website or Facebook page. We have a lot more resources there that we can connect you with. Plus, I'd like to hear from you.